2000, end of 2004, you would start to see the daisy chain IED yeah. of one, two, three, four shells put together. And then we went through this whole evolution in Ambar where we ripped up every single median that you had out there. Like if you're thinking about like Route Mobile down there in the south between Zidon and the empty area in between, you know, we ripped out all those medians because we were terrified of these things that people were actually taking these shells putting them in a concrete form and then putting them into the medians. The medians so yeah. our engineers spent all this time ripping these things up. So, you know, I always tell people that Iraq was like the world's largest ASP, man, our ammunition yeah. supply point. It was all out there. Whatever you wanted, you could find. It was yeah. out there, right? Yeah. But there wasn't the expertise available. Where do you get this expertise from that teaches you how to build a bomb? Yeah. Okay. Well, out there in the, in, in the, in the world, out there in the Middle East, it's not hard because you have cross-pollination of tactics, techniques, and procedures all the time. Israel was fighting against, in Lebanon, against Hezbollah in 2006. Yeah. Some of those people find their way into your battle space. Some of them leave your battle space and go over there and teach those folks. Yeah. And you've got the puppet master back in Tehran that's saying, okay, yeah, we're going to send this new weapon out there. You know, and it's important that people understand that the the way that the Iranian government, the Islamic Republic, saw the United States, they never wanted to have a head-on conflict yeah. since 79, since the revolution happened. It wasn't, they did not want to have a war with the United States the way they fought against Iraq for 10 years. They didn't yeah. want to do that. But now you have an opportunity to fight this proxy war through proxy forces. Yeah. So it's much easier now to find people that are circulating all over the Arab world that are over here doing something against the Israelis, they're fighting against the Americans, they're fighting over here, and you can orchestrate them and, you know, now I'm gonna give you this device, Yeah. okay? I'm gonna give you this super powerful device that you can't find anywhere else on the battlefield. It's not like you go down to the ASP and pick one of these things up, they're not there. They're not there, yeah. Right? So not only am I gonna give you the device, I only gotta give you a 30 minute class on how to put this thing together. I probably don't even need 30 minutes to teach you. Yeah. And it it reduces the risk, it causes a tremendous amount of casualties, and it's it's cheap, easy, and simple to produce and, and hand out. But there is no mechanism in Iraq that yeah. allowed you to produce that. It had to come from somewhere. Somewhere. But that is, you know, when we talk about the explosively formed penetrator or the EFV, that is the high end of the IED experience in Iraq. Um, did we see things like that in Ambar? I would say probably very, very limited yeah. in terms of scope and scale. Most of what we saw out there was, um, you know, surface, subsurface laid, shells, mines, things like that. I mean, but if you were in Sadr City, yeah. you were operating down there, you were definitely going to see those things. Yep. Not only are you going to see them, you know, on the side of the road, but they'll dig them into a wall for you. They'll get creative. Yeah. And, you know, going back to what we were talking about early on in the war, you know, it was in the median. We'd put an IED in a dead animal. We would put it, you know, in a staircase. Yeah. They would get creative. But now you had something that was guaranteed yeah. to be a killer.